So, right, you all, we've got Paul Irwin from Tri Live. Welcome, Paul. How are you doing, mate? Night, class, lads. You all right? Uh, not, not bad. Thanks. Right, how are you doing? Oh, you all right? Bad. Thanks for coming on. Right, right, thank you. Yeah, really right. appreciate it, mate. And we appreciate your support with our. Um, with our Christmas single we put out as well. We really appreciate what you did by sharing it. Uh, that was thanks great. for that. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate right. it, mate. All right. Good man. And I've got to support local artists, haven't you? Yeah, man. Well, very man, true, mate. Very true. It's what we try to do as well. So, yeah, we'll get straight into it then. You, you currently run a successful interactive web drama series, Try Life. So, tell us a bit about yourself, yeah, your background. How did you end up launching Try Life? What led you to this point? Yeah, so, um, well, my background was working in uh, youth and community work, really. But um, I was, like, I got into that because I was, like, sort of youth work, youth worked on myself. Yeah. So I uh, came, oh, out of care, came out of care. I was put in a, uh, it wasn't really care. It was fucking, uh, I'm allowed to swear on here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Bleep! <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I I'd, uh, I was in bed and breakfast down Whitley Bay. It wasn't like, you know, and I, I was, uh, I think I was about 15 year old or something. Like, so I was in with like a load of adults down Whitley Bay and um, giving the keys to a flat in the bottom of Howden when I was uh, 16. And I was going to the local uh, community centre, Howden Community Centre, and just using the gym. And um, uh, there was just one worker there that took a bit of time with us, you know what I mean? Like, uh, asked us to flip and go and help out with some of the younger ones that were giving a bit of grief. So I went and um, the only people that were making money around me at the time really were wrongings, you know what I mean? So like yes. obviously that's what you were going to yeah. do when you were when you were younger, innit? And um, so I, I just couldn't believe that like, these people were getting paid to take uh, kids like go-karting and canoeing and all of that. So, <laughs> and I just, uh, I just fell in love with like with youth work and I didn't really realise at the time I was sort of being youth worked on by myself, you know what I mean? So... Mm. I was sort of volunteering, helping out, reset my qualifications, and I ended up um, working all over the region. And um, it eventually led us to working down in London with, uh, like in South East London with uh, gangs. I ended up in Jamaica on a homeless project working out there. Wow. Worked with kids from uh, Israel, uh, Palestine, from Chernobyl. Ended up in Bradford after the riots, managing a, um, as an area community development manager. And um, uh, and then eventually, um, I was asked by a production company to go and help them do something around teenage pregnancy. Well, uh, I used to—I I was a young dad myself. I was seventeen when my son was born, and mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I went and helped out and I won a BAFTA. And then another production oh, wow. company asked us to go and uh, um, uh, help out with something about uh, knife crime. So we made a, a film with like the perpetrator as a knife crime. That won an RTS award. So then what we worked called? on it. Like, uh, what's that? What was it called? It was called Shank. Oh, right. So it right. was um, it was uh, filmed with like Sunderland Youth Offending Team, um, yeah. uh, and I saw so, like my work was like always working with young people, but then I started to look at like how you could use like uh, the arts, yeah. you know, like music and yeah. and media and stuff like that to engage with young people. So I was working at the BBC. I got a job at the BBC, and I was organising these events where like kids could. Uh, try, uh, try script writing or or uh, radio production or whatever or lyric writing with like a caller or like you know what I mean. It would bring mm -hmm. in like uh, the guys yeah. that done uh, Wallace and Gromit and stuff would bring them in and do stuff oh, for yeah. right So, and I just thought there's got to be a better way of like trying to engage with young people. Yeah. And I was at uh, Bernardo's when the financial crisis happened, and our team was like stripped overnight, and um, like down to like three people from like twenty odd. And like under austerity, if you look at like all of the youth centres yeah. and community centres yeah. and all of that kind of stuff, it's, it's it's mad and it's vital, it's, but it's really necessary. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I used to work on Post Club as a youth worker as well, uh, and the, these kids used to come in on Friday and Saturday nights, and a lot of them had nothing, you know, and it was the only place they had to go. Yeah, and they were coming in, and they were with us from ten o'clock in the morning or ten o'clock at night. We used to feed them and everything, you know. It, uh, it's it's really really terrible, isn't it? And uh, they get drawn into all sorts of other stuff because they yeah. haven't got that to do, you know? So it's counterproductive, really. Uh, of course it is, mate. But if you look at that one uh, youth worker that took the time with me, you know, if they were on, yeah. like, even if they were on 30k, which they probably weren't at the time, but, like, that stopped me from probably going to jail or, 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 or I would have been dead by now. And, like, yeah. uh, look at that one intervention and, like, all of the young people yeah. I went out to work with and, like, all of the people that I've, like, prevented. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, in yeah. austerity, they'll cut that one work because it's easier to cut. 
But when you're cutting like schools, libraries, children's centres, youth centres, sure start. Do you know what I mean? Um, mental health services, sexual health services, all the rest of it. Like, look at the suicide rate. Like, everyone has someone yeah. that's committed suicide, don't they? Do yeah. you know what I mean? The biggest killer of, of men. And, um, uh, so it's just unreal. So I, I was at Bernardo's uh, just before the financial crisis and uh, during the financial crisis, and we were working with young dads. So we'd won, like, all parliamentary award, British midwifery award, British medical journal award, and... Um, the good thing is, I was taking my son and, me, and like my son was doing uh, sc- like uh, school placement or whatever with us. But he was about the same age I was when I found out like uh, mm. his mother was pregnant. Well, okay. so yeah. that's like taking my son. I felt like I'd come full circle. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I remember like loads of people like um, like I was getting looked down at and that with us being like, a young dad. And I always thought, you know, it is like I'm gonna make sure that like like I'm gonna make sure I put the time in with him and um, uh, he end up. He was the first person in the family to go to, to university. He got a front and first in social economics and political yeah. theory. Fantastic. He's got his own flat on the quayside, you know what I mean? So yeah. some of the best parents I know are, are teenage, like, are, are young parents. And I just... Um, well, that would tell, I, think, I think a lot of them are underestimated as well, you know. I mean, uh-huh. You look at their ages and they go, way too young. Ret- written off. It's like, yeah, no, written, I've got written, loads to offer. The start, you know, and it, it's, oh, it's, not, it's not always the case, you know. Yeah. Well, mate, I've got like two 26 year olds and a flipping 23 year old now, mine are rough. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. some of my mates are just starting to have kids now. Like, and mm-hmm. I'm pleased I've done it when I've done it. You know, it was mm-hmm. hard, but, um, but like, so that's what I've done. Like, I, I work with kids all the time. And then obviously, austerity started ending all of the projects. And I thought, I've got, there's got to be a way to try and engage with kids yeah. around like drugs and alcohol, sexual health, and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, when I was a kid, I used to love reading the old Choose Your Own Adventure books. Where you would nice, get aye. Yeah. No, which ones I mean? Uh, yeah, aye. Uh, you get like a choice. No, I didn't see like ten, page 10 to go here or page 14 to go there. One of these bad lads. <laughs> oh, you've got one. <laughs> oh, I've got one, aye. From when I was a kid. I, I, I used to love them as well. <laughs> I met him. I actually met him. <laughs> I, 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 mate, I took your, I took your uh, stories. You know how his was like go to the haunted castle or the enchanted forest. I was like, mine's like, do you smoke the spliff or do you shag some more? <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you, you're you're right in saying these are choices what young people have to make. Yeah, of course, I. So we, like, I drew down some money. It was hell, like getting the cash. But we're, anyway, I managed to get like draw down some European money, and um, uh we set about writing this thing, but it was all wrote with young people, so it was all wrote, acted, uh, all of the, the music, everything's all contributed by young people, so yeah. it's all original stuff in yeah. there. And uh, some of the people were just like fresh off the street, no acting experience. And we wrote 455 pages of script, and I didn't realise at the time, like 90 pages of script is a, is a feature film, but because <laughs> also it like, stops, yeah. and then you get to see what happens with yeah. 455, which is like three quarters of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? <laughs> which is like the most complex interactive film ever. And you know, they're back and watching all that come out like it's the world's first yeah, yeah. film. The full of shit. We were there in um, 2012 doing it. Hey. <laughs> and, uh, nice one. So, so, like, the first one was about like, a young lass, she gets invited to a party. Uh, it's the night before final A level exam. So does she go to the party? Yes or no. If you say no, our boyfriend will come round and you'll basically try to get into you. It's up to you if you say yes or no. Um if you say no, sometimes he's are eat, sometimes he'll pester and pester, like it's all like choice based. So it looks like a family yeah. tree when it's mapped out. Um and if you do have sex with him, uh do you use a condom or not? Um and if not, she'll go to school the next day. And she confides in one of our mates and says, like, look, I had sex with Theo last night. Um, uh, and I didn't use anything. So we go to the sexual health clinic and she gets a test. And then we filmed, like, 11 different outcomes of that. So you got a chance of pregnancy, chlamydia, gonorrhea. Sounds General, general water. Mean- yeah, it's <laughs> the only time on social media where you'll get kids, like, you're getting up on her. <laughs> and then you'll see the mother, like, what are you on about? And then I go, oh, what a dry life. But um, the good thing is, like, the character will always be like, oh, my God, chlamydia, what's that? And, like, when she's in the sexual health clinic, find out what the, what the outcome is. We use that as an ex- like, as a opportunity for the sexual health worker to deliver that session that they would to a young person. Yeah, so it uh, demystifies it. And it's a much better way of learning rather than like uh, some of the sexual health, like, you know, when you see chlamydia advice getting printed on beer mats and that, like who's ever been out for a pint ever with the lads <laughs> and look at a, a, a 
it'd be a matter of fact, I'm going to go and get a chlamydia test. It just doesn't work, man. Like, uh-huh. and people think you have to try and trick uh, young people into like learning about all of this, but like, who doesn't want to know about life and sex and drugs and all of that? Mm. And sometimes mm-hmm. the parent isn't there to, or isn't right to have that conversation with them. So with Try Life, we just wanted to not say what's right or wrong, just allow people to make choices, make good choices, yeah. make bad ones, and see oh, what happens. Definitely. And you can go back and play it again. If you go at the party, uh, uh, you get offered a 50-50 chance of either pills or weed. It's up to you if you say yes or no. If you say yes, you've got a 50-50 chance of being okay or being ill. So you can, mm-hmm. you can take a pill and be fine, but the next day you're going to be on a come down and it messes up the exam. If she smokes weed, she goes on a whitey or she's all right. Even if she's all right, the next morning she skips breakfast, forgets her pen, doesn't perform as well. So anyway, we launched that and we had like 100,000 young people following the page and we got commissioned for episode two. So we went back down, we went down to South East London. Sorry, even just to get 100,000 young people. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, that, that is, 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 absolutely, is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, massive. Uh, I didn't expect it. When I got to 10,000, I was crapping myself, thinking, I hope this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> and then it kept going up and up. But, like, the beautiful thing was, is, like, we just use social media. So, like, what are kids into? They're, they're being, this generation are being brought up with mobile phones, gaming, the internet. They spend more, times cons- more, ty- uh, more hours consuming media than they get sleep. Like the masters are multitasking. They, they just don't uh, read uh, manuals. You know, they'll jump in and just try to yeah. figure things out for themselves. And uh, what um, what's interesting is when we were taking it into schools and, and and working with young people, the young people would like like say like, no, I'm not going to the party. No, I'm not taking the drug. No, I'm not doing this. No, I'm not doing that. Right. And then they would turn around as if to say like, have I passed? And I'm like, mate, it's not a test. Yeah. It's just a game. Just mm. play. And then you get to see the couple of them together. Like, oh, let's go and see what happens if we do that. Let's see what happens if we do that. Mm. And it's just like, just experimenting. It's, 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 like, it's like learning without knowing you're learning, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Mm. Mate, it's like, we, we, all of our casting calls, everything was all put out on social media. And we just mm. engage with people like, like you know, just authentically. And we're, um, we went down to South East London and uh, we worked with like people from like the police and NHS. So like we're done one around knife crime. It was in Lewisham, the most murderous borough in the in the UK. And uh, we went down there and we, um, worked with all of them. They told us all of the horror stories that makes like the basic framework of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like young girls carrying drugs for the lads because they get pulled less on the street, but the young lasses getting arrested, or they get they're the ones carrying the gun, but the gun mm-hmm. used to be used for like multiple crimes, so they'd get sent down for like you know five yeah. or six murders or whatever. Shit. Um, yeah. uh, and um, and then what we've done is we went and engaged with, say, the colleges and universities, but we could, like, utilise the English students, the drama students, fashion, hair and makeup, you know what I mean? Like, we could just get, like, the, like internet, fucking advertising, marketing, you name it, we could get the whole campus involved in this. Yeah. And um, yeah. and what you do is you get the buy-in from the professionals who are telling you all of the issues that they're facing, but none of them can reach the young people. Like, the yeah. NHS can't just go out in Lewisham or the police can't and go and engage with a gang of no. young young kids but if we're there with a the film crew saying like check this out what we've done in newcastle mm-hmm. think you can make one better and the kids are straight on it yeah mm-hmm. like their music and everything so was it so, so was that, that you was that you um introducing an element of competition to it like oh, yeah. <laughs> so okay, can we do can we can we do it better yeah, than yeah, than the one from up north yeah <laughs> yeah well that's what that's one way to motivate the, the young kids you know just right. put it put it Put a little bit of dangle of carrot, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then on top of that is uh, they would see like the framework for the storyline, and then like say that an example like I give you of like the young lasses delivering, uh, being asked to go and drop something off. They'd be like, "Oh, that happened to my mate, and this is what happened." So like even like so they would like they would the professionals are telling me this is what they see on a daily basis. But what these uh, youngins would do is put like the life and soul into it and like the, yeah. the tiny little subtleties. Mm-hmm. And like the slang, the flipping, like just like every like they would bring it to life. Yeah. So, so then, it was authentic. You know, I totally mean yeah. you would get like the professionals buying into it because they've contributed to it. And then you would get the buy-in from the young people because it's theirs yeah. and they own it. Uh, right, right. And then um we launched that one at um at the BFI. It was mint man. I, I, like I had a few people from Newcastle down, like and the banks of the Thames. And um I was just like so caught up in like doing like all the trial life and that. We had like, a, like a, one of the most prestigious cinemas in, in the UK and had these big plush 
chairs and that. <laughs> and uh, it was mad. I went walking around the corner and there's like me uh, brother and sister and me kids and all that. And I'm like, it's like bumping into you tomorrow in Bristol last night. Being like, yeah, lads, what you're saying, yeah? <laughs> and I realised that like, we all at the cinema because like, it was like my stuff that was going to be on the screen. It was amazing, like, amazing man. In, amazing. With like all music playing and that. And then like sitting in the front row of a cinema with like a cinema photo of your family and that. And then seeing it on the big screen was just unreal. Yeah, brilliant. That it was. Yeah. We had like 200,000 uh, young people following the page at this point. Got commissioned for episode three, which was about mental health and suicide. So they're all pretty hard hitting issues. Yeah. Uh, that The other ones were about getting the character to an end destination, whereas the mental health and suicide one was more about one person's story and it had 16 endings. And the more you watch it, the more it reveals layers to them. Yeah. Um, and then we got commissioned for episode four, which was child sex exploitation and grooming. Uh, that was filmed in Leeds. Episode five was isolation and loneliness. We got uh, went down to Essex. We just finished filming that before lockdown, and um, that's like our first uh, trans character, first gay character, uh, first yeah. autistic character. So they're all isolated in their own way, and yeah. that's got it's got eight main characters in that one. That was a nightmare to write. But um, <laughs> t- what happened is, how, uh, sorry, Paul. How long? Is it, how long typically does it take to? To, to, to write one of these films? I don't know. Well, I wrote with uh, young people, so um, maybe it's about six months or something is like the ideal time for yeah. it to, to, okay. to be worked on. So, uh, like a, a real, uh, like hard, hard work, like uh, go, goes uh, into it, and like so many people, which is like, amazing. Like, you bring all these people together and put uh, something so important together as well. Yeah. For these young people, it's, it's, uh, it's really good. I admire that. Uh, it's class, man. It's, um, or offer a real opportunity, or it's pointless. Yeah. It's the same as the uh, film. It's got to have like, real consequences. It's pointless having a, a decision in there where it goes nowhere. Like yeah. if you're going to say yes yeah. to the character, knocking someone out, they're going to go and knock someone out. If they're going to take the drug, they're going to take the drug. If they're going to go and sleep with someone, they're going to go and do mm-hmm. it. And it's brilliant for the young actors and that because like, and, and for the writers, well, just look at the, the amount of opportunity they're getting. You know, it's, uh, it's it is brilliant. So at the minute we've got like something like just over seven million people following on social media. That's amazing. That, that, <laughs> it's, right. it's immense. It's wow. it's. I mean, it shows how much it's needed yeah. though as well. You know, aye, you're, you're aye, attracting definitely. people because you're, it's necessary. The signposting you're doing, it's vital. Where else are they getting this from? Yeah, and, uh, it's really some, good. Amazing way. Uh, cheers, man. In some weeks we're reaching 188 million people. That's, that's just phenomenal, you know. And I, I, I suppose even if you can make a difference to a handful of, of lives from I, all of those people, it's 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 worth it, isn't it? Oh, um, it will definitely save lives. I know for a fact. I've personally yeah. done it myself on social media, talk people down from, yeah. from killing themselves. And like when I, I put it out on social media that like in one week we reached 188 million people, and we had um, we reached 140 million Americans that month, right? And it's mad, isn't it? Right? Something that's like I'm from Wall's End. <laughs> some of that was filmed, the first one was filmed in War's End at North Townside College, you know what I mean? And then, like, yeah. someone uh, commented saying, like, how have like, how you done that? That's 65% of all, all Facebook users in America have sold tri life on that one. What a start <laughs> that is. That's right. Um In the last 90 days, we've had, like, 849 million social media impressions, nearly a billion social media impressions with their money. It's well, that, that, that's amazing. I mean, that was... <laughs> I mean, I mean that that was a question what I was going to move. That was a question I was going to move on to. I mean, have you seen a difference in engagement since the pandemic? And um, do you feel it's made a difference to you at all? And has it had any impact on the way you just have to do things at Try Life at the moment? Uh, well, like, well, Facebook algorithms are crushing the page. Like, if I'm if I'm honest, like, yeah, yeah, we know all uh, about that as well. We know about that. Aye, right. <laughs> like an absolute nightmare at the minute. Like, but, um, but. Uh, I guess what happened was um, uh, we made these films and stuff, and I didn't expect it to to like to go as well as it did, like online. You know, like, I'd done it. I was just a youth worker, just trying to do something with like young people to, and like yeah. I didn't realize we'd create the world's most complex interactive film. I didn't think we'd have seven million people. You know, what I mean, I was crapping myself when yeah. we got ten thousand, and like in my wildest dreams, like you know, like dreaming of like having like five films, <laughs> and we're about to do another one in the region. Um, about teenage pregnancy, which is brilliant when you've been like, a teenage mm-hmm. parent yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I really want to do it justice and I'm sick and tired of like yeah. all of the young mothers being bashed and young dads being yeah. bashed. I want to yeah. try and do something like that. I it will cover the, the horrible stuff, but it'll cover the good stuff as well. And then during lockdown, 
um, yeah. everything just stopped. So uh, before lockdown, I'd spoke at like Facebook London, Facebook UK, I spoke at Facebook Grow. I was on stage with like Louis Ferro and a caller, Richard E. <laughs> Grant and stuff. I've got a stand innovation. Yeah, and right. like we're about to go and present it to Facebook Global to five and a half thousand <laughs> people in March. Uh, yeah, and down. and um, uh, so like during lockdown, it was just, it was surreal, wasn't it? Like in the back end of March. And um, what happened was uh, um, there was, I was lying in bed, right? And the, the whole world had stopped. And it was just like, uh, it was just one of them weird moments, you know, like when it was like, wow, the whole world stopped. And uh, at that time it was it was quite nice actually that the world had stopped for a little bit and yeah. just took pause, you know what I mean? Like I'm hoping that it's like, maybe things will go back to a better way mm -hmm. when it kicks back in again. And I was scrolling through Facebook on my phone and I, see, I saw this uh, guy playing a piano called Peaceful Piano. And I caught the back end of it, right? It mm -hmm. sounded lush, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, join us tomorrow at one o'clock. And it was like a Usburn yeah. um, right. community page. All right. Join us tomorrow for more Peaceful Piano. So I sent the alarm on the phone, right, for like two minutes to one. So the next day, my alarm guns off. So I logged back into Facebook. And the day before, he was playing to six people, right, on the local page. And I thought, this dude is going down to his studio, like down like, next to the Clooney. And playing piano for people like that's mm -hmm. brilliant. So mm -hmm. I thought I'm gonna share his page, right? So I whacked his page mm -hmm. on the trial left page. He <laughs> <laughs> <Not a> playing <laughs> live broadcast. <laughs> he started playing a live broadcast, so I whacked it on the trial life page. I could see the numbers and numbers going up and up and up, right? Uh -uh. So, anyways, like uh, the guy's that's called Steve Luck. He, he, I've not I've, I've never met him, right? So he's called Steve Luck and he's playing mm -hmm. away. So anyway, I thought he's gonna go and crack us here when he looks at them out of <laughs> six people. So he come over, there was hundreds of people watching, right? And he was like, come over, right? thanks very much for, and he was like, he just didn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> he amazing. Oh, uh, uh, right, right. Uh, so anyway, he, he was like, thanks very much and put it down. It's still on the trial life page, you should go and check it out. It'll be the uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, I sent him a message and I was like, mate, I'm the one that shared you on, on, on trial life page. And I was like, you've got us thinking now, like, will yeah. you give us a ring? So your phone is open, I don't even know him. I'm dead precious about like, mm -hmm. like the page and, you know, obviously I've spent a lot of time nurturing it and I don't I don't know this bloke, but I just got a, a good vibe off him. And I was yeah. like, mate, like, if I give you login access, will you just play a piano to the world? <laughs> and it was fucking brilliant, you know, like, <laughs> we, like we give some of it back. And yeah. Yeah. During the pandemic, <laughs> that, like, people have had an RTS winning composer at one o'clock in the afternoon uh, playing peaceful piano. It was brilliant. So we yeah. Me and him become good mates. Like, like I've not still haven't like right. even met him in person. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but then I got us thinking, like, uh, how could like I've got this page? Like, what am I going to do with it? Like, what's the point of me hanging on to it? You know what I mean? Everyone's like, oh, it's my page. I've got this. I've got that. And I'm not really asked about any of that. So, one of my mates, um, she uh, set up this thing called Wakey. And it's like a morning TV show, a bit like Big Breakfast, but it's all around mental health and like positivity and all of oh, that kind okay, of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Each uh, week. Yeah. And it's a, it's a Jordi on there, he's a drag artist, that's the flipping like the main presenter and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, so I just give her a login and I was like, mate, so in the oh, right. then I started thinking, I'm going to start programming the page like a TV station. So uh, in the afternoon, one of my mates uh, over in America, um, he does like a light hearted entertainment show. And it's all like feel good stories and that. Yeah. So we started whacking that on. And then Gosfaf uh, Theatre got in touch and they were like, oh, it's brilliant what you're doing. Like, uh, do you mind if we post some concerts? Because we've got all of these shows lined up, but we haven't got an audience. So on a Friday night, started posting some music concerts. And then I thought like all of the film industry, all the cinemas I should. So like on a Saturday, we're going to start doing a Saturday matinee. I've got a bloke that does like mindfulness and yoga for young kids and all that. We're going to start whacking that on a Sunday. So nice like one. that's what like, the yeah. page is just like know, an old, its own little TV station. That's amazing. Uh, that's of its own on, you know what I mean? It's quite amazing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah it's if you just want yeah. to the page and get a slot, get on it. Oh, oh man. Yes, man. Yes, man. Oh, that'd be appreciate brilliant. that. Thank I mean, you very much. <laughs> This is a little bit of an exclusive at the minute because we're trying to put together something called All in TV, our little indie night TV, and we're doing interviews with people like yourself. Um, right. We've got Tom O'Turgus from This Is England's a good friend of ours. We've just done the, um, the core of him, just gone. We've got Alan McGee, who, the guy who found Oasis. We've got Rowetta Happy Mondays lined up. Um, and we're trying to like put together a series of these interviews as long with, along with other like music reviews and things like that from right. local bands yeah. and stuff. Well, so, mate, uh, he's our audience. You know what I mean? 
Nice, one. nice one, she has. Really, really appreciate that because it, yeah. it is, it is that would hard. be brilliant. Is, Thank you very much. It is hard work getting things off the ground, of course it is. you know. And I mean, our our viewers, I mean, we've been DJing online throughout lockdown and stuff, and we're, we've raised like tw what's it, twelve and a half thousand pounds or something now. It's getting and a phone on, on, now. Our, on our small on our small platform, but it's the people who have been great, you know, it's the people who have donated all these different charities. Um, uh, which have just been fantastic, yeah, and that's the kind of what we want to do going forward. But changing it up a little bit, you know, um, yeah, I, because we feel like the um, we feel like oh, the online DJ stuff's a little bit saturated at the minute. So we're for us to, as well, though, you know, we yeah. keep it interesting. But we're yeah. trying to move. We're trying to move on and do new things, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that that would be great, Paul. I appreciate that. Well, I mean, you know, it's like uh, like I say, like. In the past, like uh, the page has always like had a life of its own. When we're in post production, we're just posting like memes and like uh, we've never done politics, we've never done religion. You know, like we always try to keep it positive and yeah. all of that. And then when yeah, it comes yeah. to pre production, we start putting out like the casting call and stuff. And on most film sets, uh, everyone's like on lockdown, like you can't use your phones and that. But like we're just like make it your phone out, get this hashtag. Do you know what I mean? Get it out yeah. there. And it's amazing right. the amount of like you know if you ask people for help, just like look how much money you use every year. You know, like if you ask people for help and genuinely get them involved in stuff, then people will dive yeah. on and, and help it. No, I mean we we've always been in a school of thought where we work together with people, and you know right. like if you help someone, they'll help you back. You know, and mm -hmm. we've always that's been true. Like that, we've always tried to help. Yeah, out. yeah, definitely. I mean, this our little indie night evolved from a small little club night. Um, down on the coast, you know, but we found that in Newcastle there was a lot of promoters and stuff there who who liked to battle against other promoters and we're like, no, no, let's all work together and 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 put and everybody pushes forward, you know. I, I just don't grasp it when people don't want to get involved. Aye. Yeah, like that's a, that's what the, the biggest learning curve for me has been like that with business. I've had like any amount of people try to bump us and rip us off and stuff like that. Mm. And uh because Tri Life has been created like like you say, like it's just one massive collaboration. There's so many different moving parts to it, you know what I mean? To make it come to life. And um uh, there's no better than coming up with an idea, seeing it make a script and then seeing an actor walk in and and then like seeing what happens when like when it's on set, like in a location, and then seeing like uh you know, like or on camera and then in edit and then all of the music put in and all of that kind of stuff, and then the end product big right, uh -huh. cinema screen is like unreal and I mean, I, I'd, I'd look. I mean, I'm sure I'm speak for the lads as well. I would love to come down and have a look you know, when, when all this is over and stuff. In the next film, yeah, I'd right. love to come down and see how yeah, things work. Good. You know, mm -hmm. that'd be uh, amazing. Well, we're going to be filming the next one, like in the northeast. So we'll get yourselves along to that. You know, oh, come nice on, set. Man. That'd be really good, eh? All right. All right, cheers, man. Sorry, right. I've got to ask. Um, what music you're into? Yeah. Since this is a music page. Uh, well, I tell you, well, obviously I'm into like so I've still got me a good. Uh, <laughs> My massive attack, tricky flipping, oh, uh, nice. yeah. libertines, and me Ian yeah, Brown yeah. and all that kind of stuff yeah. is really able. But um, what have I been into? Uh, Any new bands or? Uh, so I came across uh, when well, I was at uh, the Love Supreme Festival a couple of years ago. What's the name of this band? So it's called The Villagers. All right, um, all right. Oh, I feel yeah, them, mate. Uh, yeah. Courage, which was absolutely it was like bring it. it was, I would just got there, just put the tent up and all that kind of stuff, and I could like hear this band playing the way. And I was just like yeah. sort of doing a sound check and all that, you know what I mean? Like a mic check, and um, I uh, it was class. Ivy Soul, have you heard Ivy Soul? No, 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 I haven't heard Ivy Soul. No, uh, yeah, Ivy Soul's Kenny, the artist uh, over in the US, Ray Black, I'll have to check uh, Lass, uh, or I, that's what I've been into. Um, oh, nice one, cheers. Nice one. We'll have to let the channels out and we'll put the links, yeah, yeah, put the links down in Aye. the description, stuff like that. Okay, Paul, so yesterday when I was on the phone to you for a brief amount of time, you told us a really interesting story about what you're going to be doing with Try Life moving forward. Um, if you would care to let the viewers and us know about your special news, that would be fun. Right, so, um, like I said earlier, like um, I was joking to go and speak at uh, Facebook, so it's one of them things like uh, would like obviously like launched uh, launched Try Life and then uh, you know, the dream was to like have more than one film and then when we got like the second third fourth fifth and just about to do like the sixth one up in up here it was like it was stopped um because of the pandemic but um we like we're, we're starting to get picked up by facebook so i was starting to go down and like do some talks at facebook of like how you can utilize social media so uh 
I know there's like a lot of bad press about like uh, social media and stuff, but you know, if all you're doing is looking at other people's dinner or like looking at how happy everyone else is on yeah. social media, then obviously it's going to be like a, a depressing um, thing because not many people um, show like all the bad stuff, do they? You know, they only show like the fucking good stuff. Yeah, and, yeah you did right. Mm-hmm. And social media and that, and um, we'd um, we started uh, we started getting recognised, you know, for like, for the trial life stuff and. Uh, we'd won like innovation awards in youth work and health and social care and business. Uh, came on our opening outstanding contribution to youth work. We uh, we won. Um, it's probably like the most prestigious uh, tech competition was pitch at the palace. We won in both awards and the People's Choice Award and the overall award there. And well, um, but um, we got asked to go to Hollywood, man. Right. <laughs> so um, we were taken as a bit of a wild card. So. I didn't think I was a film company, right? I was still like in youth work on board. And then people are like, you know, like you're making films like me, I trust us, right? Like, like, so anyway, we ended up going back to America. And um, um what, what, what on stage and you were meant to have I was meant to have like 30 seconds talking, right? So we're in like Santa Monica. Mate, like, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5, I love, I love me gaming, right? I was up with gaming and that. So, like, mate, it's like, mate, I knew where I was. It's fucking mental. You get off there and you're like, I was like, oh, I walked around the wall last and I was like, say that I was, oh, I tracked a prostitute over there and shot her and got me money back. And then round here, like, you do a bank job and like, oh, all right, round here. Like, and mate, it's really weird when you go, where, like, when you're just lifted to, into a place and like, you know where you are. So, anyway, uh, we ended up, um, at this uh, meeting so there was like 150 people there from like the film industry and there was like a few companies from the uk and they were like oh we've got like a real like a, 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 a reel of films that were trying to get funded and we went to have 30 seconds on stage but as soon as i got the microphone i thought right that's it they're not getting the mic off us you know what i mean <laughs> i've been on a plane for 13 hours cost us three and a half grand to get you right you know what i mean so i just kept walking with the microphone and i was like i'm not selling anything i was like but what we're making is interactive films and this woman's trying to get the microphone off us, which I had no chance, you know what I mean? I just kept talking about trial life and I was like, we're just looking for partners just to do some cool stuff with and we're like innovating and like, trying to push the boundaries of like, you know, storytelling and, and like want to do it with music and want to do it with film and all of this kind yeah. of stuff. So we had the whole room got up and come and stood in front where main wall last, because yeah. there's only main wall last in the company, you know? So uh, they were handing out business cards, business cards. So anyway, there's this woman come with a, with a scrap bit of paper and she was like, um, I've been working in South Central with kids, uh, uh, like uh, like joining the Bloods and Crips when you come to South Central. So I was like, oh, mate, I'd love to. I love working in the dodgy parts. I worked in Bradford after the yeah. riots. I tell you earlier, I worked yeah, in like yeah. Maker in Kingston, you know what I mean? And, and like Spanish Town, Old Harbour. Uh, worked with like in South East London and that. And I love like, uh, you know, the most challenging ones. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, they're probably the areas that most need your help. Uh, yeah. It's, to be honest, it's yeah. just brilliant, man. You know, like, like, uh, How do you manage your adrenaline? You know, when you're in these areas, you know you, well, you must think, you must have to think, think soak it, it up a bit. Think. I just didn't think about it until afterwards. I've just got yeah. like, <laughs> I've just got near, near switch. So um, anyway, so we, we were there when Trump came in. So that night I was out with I met the executive producer of Crash. Right, I love that film all about racism and stuff like that. Yeah. Right, so yeah. I, I met them. Great film. I was a burger, right in this like Arnold Schwarzenegger's favorite place right watching donald trump starting to win the elections with the exact yeah. producers or crash it was just like surreal and um i was thinking you know I come from like battle hill we'll beat a buckingham palace you know what i mean lived in howden <laughs> in hollywood do you know what i mean it's class in it it's, all so, it's amazing man. <laughs> the next morning anyway we're getting in a taxi gets in an uber and we're going to this woman's house in north hollywood and she was in the hills and that and um so goes walking in uh to go to South Central with her. So there's pictures of her with Harrison Ford and flipping <laughs> Steve McQueen and all that all over. And I'm like saying to Wallace, I'm like, who's house are they? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, normally you'd just like I'd Google someone, I'd like just do a check off something, but we just didn't, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so anyway, she came out and she was like, Did I tell you what I'd done? And I was like, no, she was like, uh, I'm the producer of Blade Runner. And um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, so I'm now sitting in a car driving to South Central, do you know what I mean? Like uh, <laughs> With a producer of Blade Runner, so we went at the school called Washington Prep School, and um, I was teaching the kids, and I was like, "You don't have to be a filmmaker, because like out in Hollywood, it's predominantly like sort of like really wealthy white people that are making like the films and stuff." Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Me, I was in like in care, fourteen, fifteen year old, and the technology you've got in your hand, do you know what I mean, is enough to, mm-hmm. to you can bypass like the old 
old school way of making films is just like yeah. fucking gone, man. You yeah. just you're direct and just engage with your audience. Anyway, I was like telling them like we didn't have uh, money for uh, aerial shots or whatever, like a drone or whatever. So we would get the kids like sometimes to act it out in the in the city centre and then put ten pound of freedom of information request in and, and get the CCTV <laughs> footage. Like, well, we're wanting CCTV footage, you know what I mean? Why not just CCTV footage for a tenner? And, uh, <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we've done a couple of sessions, and um, uh, when we came out of there, um, uh, it, was, it was just it was mad being like in Compton, you know what I mean, like in, in South Central area. So oh. when we came out of there, anyway, I met this woman, and she was like, uh, "What are you doing here?" Uh, well, us is Indian, so she and like sort of past like as a sort of Native American or a Mexican or something, you know what I mean? But I was standing out like this whole film, Jeremy, you know I mean? like in the heart of like yeah. sort of no man's land, and so I showed her a trailer, I try life anyway, and. She gets on the phone and she was like, uh, Terry, Terry is a white man. Uh, he's been in Compton, you know, you need to see his work. It's off the hook. So this guy come on the phone and end up having a chat with him. So we're going to uh, meet them. And um, these, these guys are all like uh, from the Crips. So end up meeting some of the top, like some of the, well, the, like the, the founded members of the fucking Crips, basically. Barefoot Cookie oh. and uh, Melvin Farmer. It's taking you some places, <laughs> like, hasn't it? <laughs> 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 Anyway, like uh, the sound lads, you know what I mean. So I mm. get on with them, and I'm, and I'm like, he'd like, yeah, look, this is what we've been doing in the UK, and if I can reach 188 million people just using my mobile phone, can you imagine what we could do together. Why don't we do yeah. something? Like, real history of the Bloods and the Crips, not like what you see on flipping TV and all, like you know, not the oh. uh, Hollywood version of it. Man, so, like, all right, so and like, so like, let's do the full story you now. Like, let's go back to like these. Uh, lads being picked up and go, uh, being taken over to Vietnam to go and fight a war with, is it for fighting for democracy when they didn't, they couldn't even. There was segregation and all of that kind of stuff over there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like get like going to fight for something that they didn't enjoy at home and then come back and the formation of the Black Panthers and then the Bloods and Crips coming about and stuff. So anyway, I cut a long story short. Um, we ended up uh, ended up organizing. I come back to the UK, went back over. We had a chat with some of the people from the Bloods. Got put in touch with the um, Mexican mafia, and uh, <laughs> I managed to bring uh, uh, all all of them together on stage. Oh wow! Uh, really? um, yeah. uh, see, if you can see, this is uh, Wallace with the heads of the Bloods Crips. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing picture. That's amazing. That's that absolutely point. crap. Paul, if you can um, send us that on WhatsApp afterwards, mate, and then I'll, I'll yeah. that picture. Get I'll it in a better quality, can't we? I'll put it in a better quality. Aye. Oh, yeah. well, Amazing. We they're on the uh, stage, and um, uh, so what I was going over to a, um, what I was going over to a, uh, to Facebook Global for was to see if we could um, see if we could do something like on a much bigger scale. Like we've mm -hmm. tested it over here and that. But I want to go over there. So the, the idea for this format, anyway, is uh, we're hopefully going to engage with Facebook Watch because it'll be ideal to do so, something on social media. But uh, it'll be like interviews with like the heads of the Blood Crips, Mexico yeah. Mafia, having a chat mm -hmm. about like how they all come about, and um, and then what we do is we use their uh, real life experiences to create like an interactive um, like uh, film about it. And then we'll hand it over to the community and do exactly the same thing where we just like go like get kids off the street and like find some raw talent, some raw acting talent, yeah, same with the yeah, music and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, there's no stopping with from once we've done it in um over on the on the west coast, picking it up, going to New York or uh, any of the major things. So uh, hopefully that's going to be like the next um evolution of trial life, you know, is mm -hmm. doing an interactive Bloods Crips and Mexican Mafia uh, uh film. That That's an incredible crazy. project. That. That, that, that could be so big, astronomically I mean, big. That I mean, what, what a story, what an inspiration, Paul. It's been a pleasure right. having you on, mate. Nice one. Okay. Before we go anywhere, Paul, is it if anybody thinks that any young people can benefit from any tri life videos, where can they go and be found? All right, so, uh, well, the website where you, there's three episodes on there at the minute that you can play, mm -hmm. there's um, it's on trilife.tv, www.trilife.tv. And uh, hopefully in March, if you keep an eye on the Trial Life Facebook page, uh, hopefully in maybe it's March, April, uh, we're going to be filming this next one, which is back up in, in the northeast again. Amazing, it's nice fingers crossed, mate. Yeah. It's going to be like teenage pregnancy. 
So in this next one, um, with like the main uh, part of it is it's going to be filmed uh, in like a fake hospital ward where there's eight beds. There's going to be eight lasses in there, all with different stories uh, from like, around the region. So we're going to be looking for uh, we're just looking for a massive range of actors, and we need uh, original music. So it's a music show. So yeah, uh, the good thing yeah, is yeah. we're interactive because there's like so many different variations. Yeah. Of it. I love just whacking in like original music. So, if, so can can people make submissions uh, on the website or anything like that? Uh, I or just uh, get in touch like through the Facebook page or okay. whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or um, yeah. uh, or info at trylife.tv is the email address. Just like get in Brilliant. touch. So, and you don't yeah. need to have acting uh, acting experience or out like that. Like some of our yeah. some of our main cast have all been um, thingy, but. Uh, I just check out the trailers on on uh, on. Will do. Yeah. Oh, it's great that it opportunity is. there, isn't it, for young creatives? And like you say, people that are new to the game, it's oh, given yeah. them because you might yeah. find like superstars using you this approach. Stuff like that. Like, you yeah. do stuff with like, yeah. it's amazing. It's normally yeah. stage school and that in the hand picked, whereas you're giving people like who've got authentic experiences an opportunity. So it, well, it's really like, important. Uh, yeah. Some of the uh, best people. Uh, to act it or people that have lived it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when we've done the child sex exploitation uh, one last due for release in about April, so we've got uh, we've got another one due any like any any week now, and then we'll be filming the northeast one, then releasing the uh, child sex exploitation one. When we've done that one, we had uh, Hannah who plays like the lead last, so she was playing like a fifteen year old last or something going out with an older bloke, and uh, the guy that played. Um, uh, the bad guy is, is a good friend of mine now. He's Carl Shiraz. He's just a brilliant actor. You know, he's mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. trash. But it's like little things that we've done. So like Hannah had no acting experience. So we would tell Hannah that Shiraz is going to come in, grab a hold of you, shake you about a little bit and then drag you out that door there. But yeah. I tell all of the crew and Shiraz that he's going to drag her out that door. So, and I would tell Shiraz just to go 50% on her when we were doing like a script read through and that. Mm. So she was getting used to Shiraz and then she was going to go off this way. But when Shiraz come in and shook out of shit, <laughs> of that. Now that way, you could see her looking over there as if it's like we're meant to be going there, but like the look on her face, and that was a shock. One thing, you know, you know. So, Magic, so, this class run, it's good for the young, like they, they all get some on the CV. You say we went to North Time State College and um, we we'll asked like if there's any of the uh, beauty students want to come and do the makeup on set, so there was like about 40 of them. Keep me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we just had them like on a rotation where like two of them would come or three of them like every day. and each of them have got on the CV and got some practical work experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Really good. First one. I mean, that's it's, it's, it's a, a, try life LA. That's what's hopefully what's happening. Try next. Life LA, a nice I, one. I hope we know I almost got there. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. like the pandemic, yeah. it would be horrible. That thing. Well, yeah. fingers crossed. I hope you do. I'm right, very best to look with that, mate, because that's yeah, be amazing for you. It sounds amazing. Sounds like an amazing project. And once again, thank you very much for joining us today. It's, an, it's been a very, very inspirational chat. And um, we'll be keeping our, our eyes on Try Life, and I hope that um, we can send some people your way as well. Oh, I mean, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Paul. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very Cheers, much. mate. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Take care, man. Cheers. 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 Bye-bye. Cheers. See you later.